your team's never going to sell as well or better than you. Like they shouldn't be. You shouldn't have anybody on your team working more hours than you. You shouldn't have anybody on your team selling more than you. Because if you're throwing up like four a day, like the best guy's going to do two. They're always going to work about half as hard as you. Why, you why do you think it is? I, I don't get it. Why is that the case? Like, I don't care who you are. It's just the case. Yeah. So you always just got to work harder. Lead by example. Like be out there in the trenches. Like that's why I get out there is because it works because it's effective. Like you can't lead a team from your office. Like okay, there's a simple principle of it. I'm not selling for me at this point. I'm selling for them. And when some yeah. a team leader, a manager can, you know, and this is a, a tip to finishing out summer strong, is it's I'm selling for the future recruits to brag on how I finished. I'm selling to the reps that are currently now struggling probably even more than I am for the inspiration for them to not have any excuse to back down. I'm selling for the element of just inspiration to people versus you probably already padded your bank account as enough as what you want by this point in summer. Like, you know what I mean? You've already gotten to where you need to get financially. So it's not mm -hmm. about you, it's about them. This is Sam Taggart with the D2D podcast, another episode. And today is going to be fire. We're going to talk about leadership. We're going to talk about selling. We're going to talk about grinding for years on years. Uh, I got a very special guest, Daniel Naysay, that um, he's an owner of uh, his Dan Cam Pest Control runs team for marketing companies. He's been doing it for 15 years. Uh, but before we dive in, and, I, and I'll bring him on in just a sec, like, We've got a couple cool events coming up. Again, Closer School Live with Jeremy Miner, Bradley, and myself. We co-host an event in Vegas, July 28th and 29th. Make sure to go get tickets to that. They will sell out quickly. Really some cool names in the sales space. And guys, like real quick, challenge to everybody that's out there knocking, especially in the summer sales program. You guys are in the thick of it right now. And I was, I was, I was reflecting back on just, and, and maybe Daniel, when, it, when we, maybe we jam on this. I was like, don't give up right now. Like this is the time of the year where you can say, I'm going to coast it and just finish it out and just, you know, not go home early, but be here. My challenge to everybody right now is to put it into freaking fifth gear. Don't, don't take your foot off the gas right now. It's time to go put, push down the pedal harder. And uh, I hope you guys are out there killing it. And I know what it's like coming into kind of that fourth quarter, third, fourth quarter of the summer. And you're just like, bah, it's so hot. How many more days could I do this? And I think we can, I, I really want to speak to that. So, hey, welcome, Dan. Super excited to have you in here. Uh, it's been fun to kind of get to know you over the last year or so in the mastermind and, you know, coming to the events and, and look forward to, to jamming on, you know, whatever we're going to jam on. Yeah, appreciate it. Thanks for having me. So pest control 15 years ago, how'd you get recruited? I uh, just got in my ward. I was still in high school and a guy at church had a little pest control company, just a couple trucks, and he was recruiting people to sell. And I was like, that sounds too hard for me. I couldn't do that. So first first year, first summer, I actually just sprayed bugs and did a little bit of sales on the side. But I was like, nah, sales isn't for me. Sales isn't for me. And so I did that. And then I went to college and got recruited again into a Dish and Direct TV. I sold for a Dish, uh, what was it called, uh, Lynx. I remember we were working with Tosh out there and stuff. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, then the, the whole mission thing, but yeah. That's awesome. So you're sitting in your car out in turf right now. We're doing a yep. podcast where you're sitting in turf. Have you gotten any deals yet today? I don't know what time it is. Uh, not really, because I've been, I was like in Spain a couple hours ago. Uh, I just <laughs> got back from Spain. And so I, I just hit home and I've got this like motto where I'd like, Hate to say it but like i'd rather be knocking doors like i just i just love knocking doors i just love the grind like so i got home after being gone for a week said hi to the kids built some little lego sets with them then i was like cool well i gotta get out there on the team with the guys gotta go put some accounts on so so how yeah. do you get to that point so i don't think every rep would you know said by not many reps oh i just love knocking doors i gotta get out on the streets you know like you know i just got back from spain i could call the i'm tired jet lagged last thing i want to do is go knock i was on an airplane for the last 10 hours how do you how did you build up this resilience to saying i actually enjoy knocking doors i'm excited to be here like what'd you do 
Um, I I love the competition of it. I love, I thrive in that competition. Like we're doing a competition with our team this week on like head to head competition. So I'm in a head to head competition. I like shouted out, called out a guy on my team was like, hey, we're going head to head. All you guys are going head to head. And so I got to go throw some numbers on the board. He's got four for the day so far. So I'm like, I got to go, I got to go. Like I like to put myself in situations that that make me excel, you know, like be proactive with it. Love that. Um, yeah, there's pressure. Like talk about mm-hmm. pressure. And I think so many people in life don't have enough pressure on them, meaning yeah. they are, you know, they're just doing things to do them. And if they weren't to do those things, nobody would give a crap. <laughs> so, you know, yeah. you losing a competition, people, now you're exposed. You, you know, coming to the wife and not being able to put bacon on the table, like you're now uh, exposed. You know what I mean? Like there's an element of like exactly. having a kid, getting married. Uh, there's an element of competition. And so what pressures have you put upon yourself maybe over the last year or two <laughs> that has helped oh, you man. get motivated? Yeah. Yeah, that's what it is. I like to put myself between a rock and a hard place. Like I thrive in, in stress. I thrive, like my brain kicks into fifth gear when I'm, when I'm under pressure. And so I, it's hard on those around me sometimes, but I, I almost have to put myself into that situation to, you know, get my like ADD mind to just kind of focus in and like hone in and get to action. And so competitions, I like them. I remember my first year selling you know, I was planning to go to medical school and all that kind of stuff. I went to BYU and that first year I was like, I've got to sell to to be able to pay for medical school, to be able to pay for school, to be able to have enough time to study for all those things. And so I had a really big why with it. And so, you know, I had no money in my bank account, flew out to DFW. I love DFW selling out here. That's where my company is. And it was like, I've got no money. I've either got to do this or I'm going to die. Like, And so my first week I sold nothing. Second week, I didn't sell much. First month, I had sold 20. So my buddy was like, hey, you know, you're going to sell 80 this summer if you keep doing what you're doing. And I was like, <laughs> I'm going to make I'm gonna make no money. Like, I'll literally make no money. My wife came out. She sold her first summer, too. She was beating me. I was like, what is going on? And so I liked what you were saying at the beginning about, you know, kicking it in, you know, like, I was like, I got to do this. And so there's always that answer. I always tell people there's, you know, you got to work more hours and train more. If you want to make more sales, you got to work more hours and you got to train more. It always comes down to that. And so I just started doing that training in the morning. Just, hey, get, go drop me off on the doors as soon as you can right after meeting. Chuck me on the doors. I'll bring my little lunch bag, throw it in a bush and just work all day. And then I started getting sales, started getting five. And then finally I broke like a 10 day. My second month I sold a hundred. Third month I sold another hundred. And uh, just putting that pressure, knowing I had a why. Every day I'd say, Dr. Dan, Dr. Dan, Dr. Dan, in between doors, Dr. Dan. Like, give it everything you got. Give it everything you got. Just keeping super focused on it. And then probably not good. It's definitely not like, I mean, it puts a lot of stress on me. It puts a lot of stress on my family. Um, but starting a company, something that I've done, which is probably not a good idea, but I, I'll leverage myself. So meaning I'll be like, okay, we got to make this company grow. So... I took all my savings and dumped it in the company when I started it. Just like spent that. Okay, there's the real pressure. This (laughs) is the meat that I like. Okay, so you took all your guys. You heard that? Takes all his savings and says, "I'm all. I'm all my chips are on this one. Here we go." Yeah. When I flew out to Texas that first time, I had no money. Lease the apartment. You know, like either got to sell or nothing. And then I started the company. I didn't get, for whatever reasons, didn't get as much money on my on my back ends as I thought I was leaving the company I was with to starting my company. Thought I was gonna have a nice little nest egg. Wasn't there, but I was like, no, we're doing this. So I just started knocking doors. December 1st, knocking doors, hired a guy. He was just servicing them. I was just knocking. So I was, for the last five years, just been building it all up. And, um, but so I've been, there's been times when I've had payroll and all those different types of things and money's not quite making sense. So I'm like, well, take out a loan. And I've taken out some pretty dumb loans, some high interest, short term loans. And that, let me tell you, if you want some pressure, take out a high interest, short term loan and start trying to like compound it, leverage it, you know, get it to grow, you know, catch up to the payments before you run out of money. 
And uh, so I've been knocking doors like solid for the last five years for my company, just hiring people and leading people and selling. And I, it's interesting because I've never sold as well as I have when I have a team with me. Like I never sell as well when I've got a team watching me, when I've got a competition going. And uh, put, I like to put that pressure on me because I was, that's why one reason I wanted to start my marketing company because I wanted to be in that team environment with that competition. And that's one reason I like working with you and being in the circle because it, you know, it gives me peers to work with. And uh, that's why I'm going to do like the National Knocking League and everything because it's fun. You know, it's fun when you're working with people. Yeah, there's so much power in having community. I think so many people fail to realize that your environment is what motivates you and puts pressure on you. When you dropped, you know, 30 grand on the mastermind, it's not easy. You're like, uh, again, high leverage. And you're like, okay, yeah. my ass on the line. I've got to get a return to this. Or when you go and you know, you're, you're, you're surrounding yourself with other business owners, the natural ego is like, well, I don't want to look like an idiot. So I better perform higher. So I don't be the dumb one in the room. And, you know, I remember yeah. when you came to the recruiting summit, there's just one of you and you're like, it's me, Sam. And now you got 10 guys and you're building a squad. And you know what I mean? And it's just like, you went and did it and you're in it and you're doing several million a year now. And it's like, that's impressive, dude. You put your ass on the line. Like I, I, I admire people like you that put your savings out there. You put your high leverage, like you, you were willing to take the risk and now you're reaping the reward essentially. Yeah. I was, I was in the airport and talking to some guy, you know, just recruiting, just saw some in the line trying to recruit him while I was waiting to get some food. And he was like, well, was it worth it? I was like, well, I mean, I just spent a week in Spain like with my wife and made more money that week than I've ever made in another week before that off my company and salespeople doing it all. I was like, was it, is it, was it worth it? Like, yeah, <laughs> it was worth it. <laughs> yeah. And, but, but people aren't willing to go into the tunnel or the pain in order to get that gain. Like they're not willing to like put on the the challenge or take on the responsibility and they think by just living a neutral life they're going to get extraordinary results but what goes up must first come down like what you you know you look at the greatest heroes in the world martin luther king jesus like all these people they had the hardest life yet they had the most yeah. filling outcomes like you know what i mean and it's like you you have to invite in the challenge in order to gain you know, ultimate success, in my opinion. Um, so, so let me ask you this. What is, so you said earlier, you're like, and getting to know you're like, one of your strong suits is running teams. You were a, you know, a cup champion at Altera when you were there. You have had built and, and ran really successful teams. Like speaking to the manager that's listening to this, uh, you know, you've been in this for 15 years. You've come and seen reps come and go. You've seen reps be top performers. You've seen reps, you know, all over the map, right? what um what advice would you give a manager at this point in the summer to maintain high volume for his sales for him individually to maintain high sales no, for, his for, his for, his team, for his team to yeah so for his team to perform um and that's something we're working on right now too is because it's great to have like those long-term goals and like those big ones but you've got to have those those short-term incentives in place like those those almost minute by minute like i gotta get a sale this hour type thing and so um for the team to set that up it's really important to run a really good incentive program like short term like you know next sale first sale like monday mornings we're always okay first sale of the week first sale of the day you know gets 20 bucks and then you'll sell it there you do like activities in the meetings that make it fun, you know, shooting for loot and everything, like drawing for cash and stuff. Um, Short-term little things that that make it in the moment fun and doing those like little competitions so that it's not such a drag. Like when you're thinking, oh yeah, I need to sell 200 this summer so that in six months I can get that. It, it's not real, it's not in the moment. And so, um, there's a lot of little things that, you know, you teach a lot about in all your programs about how to run effective teams, because it's like, it's like knocking doors. You know, a lot of people go, oh, door to door doesn't work. Like, yeah, it doesn't work for you if you don't do it the right way. 
there's definitely an art to how to do it successfully. There's an art to how to run a successful team. And uh, it, I mean, it's sure, I'm sure it's just all the things that you teach in your programs and stuff. You know, you, it talks about it in your videos and stuff. Um, so competitions are a big one. I, I, I live off, I thrive off competitions. Incentives, it's a little harder when you're the team leader because like, I'm not motivated by like money or like incentives things like it just doesn't really motivate me like what what I love is I love watching people progress I love watching people succeed like that's where I derive, derive satisfaction and summer sales has done so much for me like blessed my life so much that I just love helping people experience that same thing and progress and so your team's never going to sell as well or better than you like they shouldn't be you shouldn't have anybody on your team working more hours than you you shouldn't have anybody on your team selling more than you because if you're throwing up like four a day like the best guy's going to do two they're always going to work about half as hard as you why, you why do it is I, I don't get it why is that the case like i don't care <laughs> who you are it's just the case yeah so you always just got to work harder lead by example like be out there in the trenches. Like that's why I get out there is because it works, because it's effective. Like you can't lead a team from your office, like as well. I mean, the, the best guys never do. No, it's, it's just, it is the case. Did you, did you seen Top Gun yet? Uh-uh. Uh, anybody that's seen the new Top Gun, Maverick, Tom Cruise, he goes in there and is like, they all couldn't think that they could do this time within two minutes and 30 seconds. And they're like, it's impossible. It's impossible. He's the old dog. They're all these young cats. And he goes in, he's like, hijacks a plane and just like, does it. And everybody's like, <laughs> ah! and like gave hope. You know what I mean? Like sometimes exactly, yeah. he wasn't piloting every day, but like, he was like, I will do this and I will show you that I'm freaking badass. So now everybody shut up and say it is possible. So you throwing yeah. in 15 in a day or you throwing in 20 in a day, you throwing in five in a day, whatever the number is, just kind of shuts everybody up and is like, what, in your neighborhood? I just did what? Okay, now stop talking. It is possible. The customers are out yeah. there. And this is the rut. And if you're listening to this, guys, this is a rut that everybody gets in. They're like, oh, this neighborhood, or oh, it's hot, or oh, our pricing's too high, or oh, if I was trained better. And I'm like, uh, if I had a dime for every story I could debunk your belief system right now, <laughs> we're stuck in, I'd be yeah. right. And I could send another company, another team, another rep, right in your freaking same neighborhood right now and change the way you're thinking. Yeah. I'm well, sure speaking back on like the, the pressure, like that's the pressure I like to put on myself. I like to have 10 guys watching me. I like to have like knowing that if I don't sell, my team won't sell. And that's the situation I like to put myself in and to get myself formed because I mean, I won't lie, like for those five years when it was just me and my company and I had maybe a couple guys here and there, I didn't sell nearly as well because it was like there's I don't know like I didn't have people watching me you know nobody knew when I put a number on the board like it's fun okay there's a simple principle of it's I'm not selling for me at this point I'm selling for them and when some yeah. a team leader a manager can you know and this is a, a tip to finishing out summer strong is it's I'm selling for the future recruits to brag on how I finished. I'm selling to the reps that are currently now struggling probably even more than I am for the inspiration for them to not have any excuse to back down. I'm selling for the element of just inspiration to people versus you probably already padded your bank account as enough as what you want <laughs> by this point in summer. Like, you know, I mean, you've already gotten to where you need to get financially. So it's not mm -hmm. about you, it's about them. Yeah. It's called a team leader for a reason, you know? It's not a, I don't like to call it a team manager because you don't manage people, you manage things. You gotta lead the people, lead from the front and everything. 100%. So let's talk about any crazy stories. I mean, you've been in the industry for 15 years. I'm sure you have, do you have any crazy one rep stories or two customer stories? Um, rap stories. I felt like there was one that just happened the other day. Um, no, like I don't, I don't think I get too many of those like crazy customer stories. I'm pretty good on the doors and keeping people calm. You know, I've 
I think back in the day, maybe had some people, sometimes you just never know. Sometimes you just get the crazy people. And my favorite thing to say when I run into someone who's just like having a bad day, it was kind of like um, from one of your podcasts the other day, I like to just say, hey, God bless you. Like, oh my gosh, super sorry. Like my bad, my bad, super sorry. Like, God bless you. Hope you have a better day. And they just stop. They're just like, oh, wow. Like totally turn them around and then you can sell them, <laughs> you know? It. Um, what, are, what are some other good turnarounds when you're having a bad day what turns you around yeah i mean you definitely have to put yourself in situations to turn yourself around and i mean it's good to it's good to try to keep yourself pretty even keel i'm i'm a pretty even keel guy but i definitely i'll use that pump up music like when i'm not feeling it i'll blast the music in my car i like to listen to rob bailey hustle standard he's got some really good motivational just like gets me going and then i just kind of hit that first door really hard you know and i know if i almost like pump myself up and then i'm like i better make the sale in this next hour to get to that next step so that i can get to that next step because it's hard if you get out there and you're not feeling it and then you don't sell for like an hour and then you're really not feeling it and then you start to get tired i mean there's so many things to it that's why i listen to all your podcasts that's why i listen to all your stuff because there's so many things you need to line up to like we're performing a really high level. Um, but yeah, pump up music. Um, yeah, it's crazy how much just music can change your state. And we underestimate yeah. the, the, that power of that. For sure. Yeah. So let me ask you this. What keeps you not burnt out from 15 years? I mean, how many times have you maybe said, ah, one more year, and then I can do something different. Have you ever, has that ever gone through your mind or like, is it, I don't know. Like, I know it's crazy to think about it. Like, I'm like, oh man, how are these guys? Like, how am I going to convince these guys to like knock doors for, cause I do a year round program actually, like out here in DFW. That's one unique thing we do is we do seasons. We do four month seasons, but we run three of them a year. So we do the summer, the fall and spring. And it's good to give people, you know, a, an end goal and everything like that and do different incentives with it. Um, and we were sell for different companies at times too, for different seasons. Um, but I, yeah, I'm, at times I'm like, how am I going to commit someone to sell year round? And then I think I'm like, I've been doing it. I've been knocking doors for almost straight five years. I'm like, I'm still doing it. And I still love it because for me, it's like an art. I love trying to, I still feel like I have so much to learn. I still have so much to learn. I just, I love the art of it. I love, uh, I love understanding people and the psychology behind it all and like mastering my art and skill of it because i think it's the most valuable skill you can obtain like one of my favorite quotes is like um rockefeller you know uh people skills is as purchasable a commodity as sugar or coffee and he said i'll i'll pay more for that ability than any under the sun like the mm -hmm. ability to deal with people is the most viable thing like just because you say one thing or you say another thing completely turn a conversation in a different direction learning how to take somebody that's upset or not wanting to do something and help them understand why it's the best option i, I just love it i don't know i just love I, I think i'm just weird and that's what i tell people i'm like look this isn't a good job for most people this is a this is a very hard job on a lot of levels but for some people, it's amazing. And for me, it has been, and maybe it will be for you. And I can't tell you if it's gonna be good for you or not. I cannot tell you. I'd have no idea if you're gonna be good at this or not. Like literally, I doing this 15 years, no idea. No idea if someone's gonna be good at it or not. Like, I swear, yeah, I swear. So, there's like, I wish, <laughs> dude, I even started this study with the, uh, Iowa State University around sales predictability and success, and I'm like, it's too much dude there's so much variable to that i'm like i have no idea it's like some of the guys they're just like how did he succeed and how did he not like blows my mind how's he still yeah. doing it <laughs> like yeah um so no. so last question is we kind of got to wrap up if you were to give now being in it this long this is speaking to the first year rep what piece of advice would you give them knowing what you know now if you were speaking to your first year self? Uh, I think a lot of people like get too caught up in the money of it. Uh, like everybody gets too caught up in the money of it. And, uh, you know, I would trade, if someone was like, you have to give me $10 million 
or I'm going to take away every ounce of knowledge you know about everything you've learned in the last 10, 15 years. I'd be like, where do I sign? 100% all day long. Like, it's not about the money, you know, it's about the experience and the development. I changed 100% from who I was, you know, I was shy and I was timid. Like I said, I, I tried it a couple of times. I was a technician, you know, but you, you can't just learn from reading a book. And I've read a lot of books on it and you can't learn from reading a book. You got to get out there and and work through it. You got to get out there and talk to people and over time you develop it. And so even if somebody went out for four months and made two thousand dollars or something like that, you know, it's not about the money. It's about the education, the experience. It's just about the experience and just being grateful and happy and and learning how to look for the good in life and learning how to be proactive. And so just like, don't worry about the money of it. Just learn, worry about the experience of it. Worry, worry about the, the personal development, you know, who you're becoming and who you're changing to. And, and yeah. Love that. That's great advice. And I would not, I would agree 1000%. Um, and so if you're listening to this guys, like remember that because it's so easy to get caught up into the money. And I, I second that. So well, then, as, I, oh, you go. Yeah. well, like, as you know, like once you get money, money's not a thing. Like it, money's not important at all. Like it's really about developing yourself and then helping other people develop. And like, you're talking about like Jesus Christ and Martin Luther, like, true satisfaction comes from serving people and helping other people develop. And that's how, that's what true leadership is, you know? And so I just love everything about it. I love the industry. It does pay stupid, stupid good. It pays so well, but I just love everything about it. No. And, and guys, the best way you can serve some people or is, is showing up for them. Like knowing when they're having a bad day, when even though you're having a bad day, show up for your reps and your team, show up for the guy that's in the office that's struggling, like find opportunities in your current environment right now to go serve, show up for your customer, like make this not about the transaction of money, make this about, hey, my service is so good. I feel bad if you didn't buy, you know what I mean? Like, like make it about serving. And I promise this job will t take on a new light. If it's all transactional about money, you're going to get burnt out really quick or you'll feel complacent because you've got the money. If it's like, Hey, you're doing a disservice by not selling a, a ton of deals today because you're making it about the money. Like it's not about, I need to serve everybody I come in contact with. And the only way yeah. I can serve you is transacting. Therefore yeah. I made a lot of sales. <laughs> so that's the way that you look at that. Um, so dude, I, I appreciate you hopping on the, the, the podcast. It's fun knowing that you're an avid listener. You're in the, Masterman, it's been so fun to like get to know you over the last little bit and I'm excited to kind of continue to build this relationship and you know now you being in the podcast it's like those are big level ups and and I think that yeah everyone should have a goal to say like hey I was this and now I'm this and now I'm this and like you know that's part of this personal development thing and it's like I I, I I'm excited to have you on the show and I'm excited for everybody that got some value out of this so if people are you know got value guys leave a review here is here Give us some feedback on like what you what you learned and the challenge out there is to see if you can start making this more about serving and sharing and less about just making money. You know what I mean? So, for thank, sure. Thank you so much for being on the show and we'll see you guys on the next episode. Yeah.